I need to look for mostly Windows. I care about Windows right now. So that's what I'll be attacking. Windows Active Directory, anything like that. So let's go to our um, show all the rooms. The order is fine. The difficulty is fine. Let's search for Windows. So let's start with uh, Atlas. Welcome to Atlas. This is an introductory level room to aim at to teach you the basic of Windows system subsystem exploitation from initial access to the privilege escalation. You do not need any prior experience before attempting the room. However, it will be helpful if you have the basics. Okay. So first, I'll join the room. Start the machine. Press the green start machine. We did that. So we're going to go through this room together. Our machine started here. Our IP is 10101139. So we will go and access, see if we can actually just ping it from my attacker machine. All right. Oh, maybe it doesn't do ping. So... Let's go ahead and get started. Enumeration and port scanning, that's task number two. Here they teach us how, like, how to enumerate. Uh, we've, you've seen on this channel that we use Nmap most of the time. In this case, they're saying, hey, just go and run Nmap against that. And as VV for the boss, minus PN, make sure that it doesn't ping. And this is why our machine was not responding to my ping. So we need to use minus PN. Scan the target with Nmap. Not you need to use minus pn here since the machine does not use icmp does not respond to icmp so let's use nmap sv minus sc like they said so the boss just make sure that we it doesn't wait holy smokes and of course we forgot one thing we need to put in minus pn no ping all right, now it's going. So as you can see, port 8080 is open. Usually, uh, that port is that, that port usually runs web, web website. So let's go check it out. 3389, which is RDP, is also open, which shows me that that machine is a Windows machine, which we kind of knew. 8080. There we go. Uh, this asking site is asking us to sign in. So whatever is doing here, uh, we have a sign-in page and we need credentials. We can also run Nikto and go back on this site if we wanted to after this is done. Or well, we can throw Derb, which is not as comprehensive, but it would do the work. So let's just have this ready, but I don't want to disturb my Nmap scan here. While that is happening, let's go back here. Uh, we say, yes, we are running the scan. So we'll complete that task. With the default default port range you should find two ports that are open what are the ports of these so we have 8080 and we also discovered no 3389 what service does nmap think is running on the higher of the two ports on 8080 let's see is it told us yet no we haven't gotten the results yet so we don't know what service is running there but once once it finishes we'll be able to tell Okay, so it's done. What service does it think is running on a higher port, which is 8080? Let's scroll up here. All right, it's, it thinks that there is HTTP proxy. Uh, we should usually go into a little bit more depth about scanning, but we leave it there since it's an introduction room. Okay, so we did the first task. Let's go do it. Second task. Uh, we have a thin VNC. They want us to use search exploit for thin VNC. So that's the next step here. Let's just do that. I don't know how up to date my search exploit is, but we'll do the job. All right, so we have a Python script here, authentication bypass. I don't like that. We just confined to my search exploit because the database might be out. So we can search Google and say, hey, uh, do you know anything about the VNC? The VNC? Authentication bypass is right here. I'm going for the OS EP and I'm using Metasploit. So let's see if there's a Metasploit one. When I went for the OS CP, I did not use Metasploit as much. And when I became a red team, I, it was almost like crippling because I didn't have a lot of experience using C2 framework. So now we are actually going to just use Metasploit. Okay, I found one here. So I will launch Metasploit and use this module. MSF console. All right, so Metasploit launched. Let's use our module. What are the options that this takes? Depth, okay. 
the remote host of course okay so from here we don't need a proxy we set our, our host the port is 8080 which is good uh, the threads that's fine we I think this thing is ready to run or exploit Ooh, okay file then saved in this location found credentials for atlas and the password so okay we found some credentials next since we have rdp open we can go and use the rdp service to, to access the machine and i think that's what the second party is talking about she says um oh yeah they're talking about python we're not doing that we're doing we're working with metasploit today the script requires two arguments uh, yeah sure bonus so they were trying to teach us how to read exploit code here in this section and how to fix this python script but we went with a different option here so let's um access xrdp and they explained to us that hey this is where we are going the username and password ignore the certificate clipboard this shares clipboard for us dynamic resolution make sure that it works drive to share temp our final switch shares our own temp directory with the target this is extremely useful to execute scripts and stuff like that oh good so we're sharing our own temp directory i didn't know that we can do that with uh xrdp so that's good to know i'll add that to my notes but here we go to here we don't need derb forget that we are just going to give them this information we found right here Okay, making sure that we don't have any special characters so that should work sometimes we have to escape using quotes uh, the username is atlas all right let's see if uh, free rdp would work here i don't like sharing my temp folder with uh, especially in a shared environment like try hack me but nothing is in my shared folder that's worth of value so we'll join Okay, so we are in. Let's see if my shared folder is here. This PC. Here's my share or my Kali. Let's see what's in there. Ah, some random files. But hey, everything is working. Let's open a terminal. Who am I? Slash privs. Who am I? Is it who am I? Slash all? I thought previs was a thing. I guess not. Okay. So if you look at the privileges set here, set change notification is enabled. Or, um, that is not helpful. Local account. So it's not part of a domain. Remote desktop users, which is why we are there. Interactive logon. Nothing interesting here. We hit the medium uh, mandatory level for security here. So with that, let's follow the instructions, I guess. Otherwise, I'm, I'm more inclined to just go and start uh, poking with it. So we can use win, win piece and seat belt here as tools that we can use for privilege discussion. They say there are many different implementations of pre-nightmare available. You are advised to use PowerShell version written by this person and John Hammond. Okay. Okay, so we know that we're working with pre-nightmare. Navigate to the temp directory of your attacking VM and clone this report the repositories so copy that i guess that's why we're setting up um, our temp directory here there's so many new tab cd slash tmp uh oh, but we we clean up the temp folder for a second yes come on get rid of everything okay git clone we need to clone that repo all right cd cve that what do we have here we have a print my nightmare dll and a um, powershell script okay let's go to that git repository and poke around it a, a little bit before start running things all right 
we just want to see. I know the room probably explains what Pre Nightmare is doing. Okay, we did that. Instead of RGP session, open a new PowerShell window. Then they want us to just run it. But before we run it, we're going to check it out. Here's the script. John Hammond wrote this. Okay. We can get the path supplied. Okay. So we got that working. Uh, the repository we downloaded uh, contains the PowerShell script that needs to be imported. So to import it, we can just open a terminal and run that. And I see ISE is the first one. I like PowerShell ISE because it gives me the IDE environment. Okay, let's see if we can paste in here. All right, it looks like we can. So let's import that. This will take a second. Okay, PowerShell is like, hey, are you sure? Yeah, of course, run once. We want to run Print9May here. Okay, so now Print9May is imported. Let's expand that. We just follow the instructions here, but there's different implementations of Print Nightmare. So we did that part here. We can now do invoke Print Nightmare. And this will add a local administrator for us. And then we'll delete the payload. So invoke Print Nightmare. That's our command. Let's see if it actually works. Yep, and our results look just like what they have right here. Notice that our payload mission is creating a new user called admin and the password password. This is the default behavior for using the exploit. However, we, have, we could have created our own and substituted this because defenders see that. Regardless, we can now make use of our brand new admin account. Let's see if we got the admin account. All right. Yes, we did. And here's password. Here's the user admin. So print nightmare was the exploit there. We could take a simple option on the right by right clicking PowerShell or command line choosing run as administrator, but that's not fun. So instead, we'll use a hacky little PowerShell command to start a new high integrity command prompt running as new administrator. I like this. I like this a lot. The command is as follows start process PowerShell, start process run as credential admin one. That is cool. I was thinking of Metasploit, but I guess we can just start a new process right now as admin. So let's go and see what that looks like. So go into my machine here. Okay, now it's asking us for a password, which in this case, the password is password with RD, then okay. Let's see if it starts a new session is that. There we go. Yes. So if I say, who am I? Sure enough, I have a new session as that person. So that's kind of cool to just, uh, just start a new process. I could have started a PowerShell, but I started a command prompt. So that's cool. And I'll run who am I such groups the new, in a new window. I should see that I'm part of the other groups. Local administrator group, built-in administrators. Cool. So now that we are part of that, we can do pretty much whatever we wanted. Post exploitation. Uh, we want to become system, it looks like here. So for post exploitation, I see that they are bringing in mimickets. Awesome. We have admin access. Now, what can we do? The classic thing to do here would be to try to dump the password hashes from the machine. In a network scenario, this will come in handy for lateral movement. They also give us a way to prove our access to the client. You know, like, hey, we are not just goofing around here and collecting your money. Uh, the most commonly used tool to dump is called mimickets, which is Easy to detect by Benjamin Delphi, uh, but the go that's the go-to. So first, let's um, get up, up to date with Mimikets on our attacking machine. The code is over the these two is available. So there's uh, pre-compiled versions available for download. Go to the releases page for Mimikets and find the latest version at the top of the list. Click the downloads uh, trunk to zip on your attacking machine. Note, certain browsers block this repository for being free. Okay. We are going to download this on my Kali and we'll probably create a Mimikets folder. But let's copy this link here. I already don't have Mimikets. So this is going to be cool. Let's minimize that. Use this browser. Still don't know what the this, this 8080 thing is, but we don't need it anymore. Here's a browser that's complaining about Mimikets. 
I need to go in anywhere. Okay, so they said the trunk.zip. If I go to my downloads, uh, let me actually get organized here for a second. Okay, we're going to be in our tools. Let's copy uh, from our downloads. to here, then unzip, okay, uh, did I just unzip it in everything, okay, okay, copy all to, Okay, so now we have my Mimikets inside of a Mimikets folder inside of my tools, which is kind of cool. Um, now, I think they want us to copy the binary. So here's the unzipped version. Done. Now we can get to work. Okay. Which part do I need to copy? Make sure that the zip folder is in your temp directory and unzip. Ah, come on. Okay. So I'm going to have it in two places. I don't want it in my temp folder most of the time. But I'm going to have it in my temp folder as well. Okay. So this is TMP. Okay, in my temp folder here, unzip. The mimic has a zip. Great, we get all the cool stuff. Now, what do they want me to do? When we start Mimikets, we usually have to execute two commands. This is a privilege debug, which gives us the debug privileges. The token elevate, which is simply put, takes us from our administrative shell to system. So we like the token elevate one. Uh, there's also other variations like LSA dump SAM, which will dump the SAM uh, hash for me. So here they want the administrator's NTLM hash. So we need to launch our Mimikets from our command line using this just go to the share and run that so having a share is kind of neat i have to say but we need to do that from our elevated command prompt all right we have mimikets there and the final thing is we need to we can run any of these uh if we wanted to so privilege debug should say okay the next, let's elevate to become system. Then a system we can dump the NTL hash for the actual administrator or everybody. Here we, we can see that we can impersonate this person. We have some their ticket and also NT system impersonation is enabled. Now let's just dump the hashes using LSA dump hash. So this won't be too helpful for my OSEP. Unless if I'm like in a machine where I disabled AV and everything. But for now, let's see if we can just get the hashes. There we go. We just ran Mimic heads. We just need to find out which one is the administrator. And we give them the hash. Right. So what is the Intel enemy hash for, for the administrator? It's right here. And we have copy paste all the way from there. So that's good. Make sure that there is no space at the beginning here. All right, so final thoughts. We hacked Atlas, and this is a beginner box. And as you can see, we are done. Thank you very much for being here, and I hope to see you next time when we create another machine here as we get our streak up to seven. Thanks, and remember to subscribe and like this video.